it was a human, not her. This land was part of the Jewish community's property here in Rome. And when the state took it over, they did this rose garden. Some of the paths form a menorah, seven pointed menorah. Oh, cool. That is really cool. Yeah. So, if you were to look at it from like a bird's eye it would perspective, look like a menorah. it would. Most of the roses were uh, actually, uh, well, all man-made and all ma mutated, but it was because of the crossing of uh, the English bringing back roses from China uh, in the tea ships there as well, and crossing with the European breeds. Uh, and that's why we get so many different varieties down there as well. But they're, but they're technically called tea roses because they came in the tea ships. Oh, there's a heart! Let's go stand in front of it and pretend Aww. to love each other. Oh, oh, this thing? <laughs> that one. Oh. <laughs> okay, we can kind of see the menorah from here. Yeah. Yeah. So they do guided tours for a fee, a small fee. You'd have to go to the website, which we will post up here somewhere. I think it's just fairly self-explanatory that you should stick to the path, no? I think so. And yet every person except for us is on the cross. Oh, good one! Oh! It's lunchtime, guys. I mean, considering it's like 3 o'clock in the afternoon, the early bird doesn't always no, get Not necessarily, <laughs> the late bird sometimes gets it. The Knights of Malta, often confused with the Templar Knights, there's actually some theories and logic that they may have stemmed from the Templars but they were actually formed in the 11th century in Jerusalem to take care of the sick and also guard pilgrims on their journey to Jerusalem. They stayed in Jerusalem for about 200 years or so, and then they went to the island of Cyprus, then the island of Rhodes, then eventually the island of Malta. And this is the fun thing that everyone comes to see, the keyhole. So what's and exciting about the keyhole? Uh, the keyhole, what's exciting is what it looks at. Here we go, have a look. Yeah. The real history would mean that's actually there's uh, two settlements where Rome started with. Uh, yeah. One on the Palatine Hill and one here on the uh, Aventine Hill itself. And of course Rome grows over time and becomes uh, much bigger and spreads out through the seven hills. Uh, but at the start it was just those two hills that were populated. Uh, and of course um, that's not quite an exciting story as Romulus and Remus. So Romulus and Remus became the official legend itself. As Rome grew, I mean, Rome by the time of Augustus was a city of a million people. So the poor, they lived in the valleys because it was hotter, it smelt, and all the waste went down, basically. Whereas uh, the rich people tended to grow up on the top of the hills. So the Aventine became, even by the time of Augustus himself, pretty much the second best retail uh, in uh, Rome. Oh, wow. Cicero famously had a house up here. Uh, yeah, so did Trajan and Hadrian before they were emperors. Yep. Um, uh, yeah. And it was yeah, nice views, nice breezes, uh, nice and easy, and uh, it was right next to the actual imperial family as well, so it was quite close to them. Yeah, it's beautiful. So now we're going to go into the orange garden, the in Italian. Giardino de Ranchi. So there's a really neat optical illusion that happens here. Um, when we get to the other entrance, we'll show you. It's not super noticeable. No. Nah. We'll try to convey it in film, but it's something that's kind of just a slight optical illusion. But it's kind of neat. So keep your eye on the dome. Uh, 
as always, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube, like our channel, hit the notification button so that you can get all of the latest videos. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook. We're also on TikTok and Pinterest if you're on those ones as well. Come visit us in Rome. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. As always, um, don't forget to ask questions if there's anything that we haven't covered or anything that you want to see. Uh, get in touch down below in the comments. Absolutely. We're happy to do this for you and the next one will be at Ostia Antica. So enjoy your day guys. Bye. Bye. Oh, go on. You can get you singing in this time. There rose has its stone. She went on just for like, like a minute and a half. every cowboy. Oh wait, no, that's not right. Uh, it doesn't sound right. <laughs> just like every night has its dawn. Yes. That's it. Every cowboy sings a sad, sad song. Every rose. I wonder if that's true. If every rose has a thorn. <laughs> yeah. Pretty sure they do. I yeah. mean, I feel Fairly like sure. if Brett Michael says it, <laughs> it must it's be true. true. <laughs> <laughs> Say that again because I missed it. I feel like if Brett Michael says it, it must be true. It has to. It's like a what would Jesus do? What Brett Michael says is true. <laughs> Fair enough. I'm not sure you can relate Brett Michael to Jesus. <laughs> I mean, some Americans can. <laughs> Amazing. I hate you. <laughs> You're such a jerk. I was like, they're walking. It's safe to sing. <laughs> it's never safe. <laughs> you look really cute though. Oh, thanks. You're all like Beyonce windswept back. This is. You know what's happening. <laughs> you uncomfortable. I'm also stuck. <laughs> <laughs> no, try and get up. <laughs> yeah, <this is> stuck. <laughs> no, I've got it stuck in my head. Uh, yeah, same. Hey, Rose, <laughs> You're proud of yourself? Yeah. So every rose has its thorns except for that one. Uh, can you guess roses? I'm probably gonna put some roses there, hey? <laughs> probably. Do you know what? I reckon just bugger it. Plant some lilies or something. <laughs> like, just mix it up a little. Pigeon, pigeon, wait, pigeon. <laughs> I think it's just a dog. Oh, it's a dog? Oh. <laughs> white pigeon. White pigeon. Also <laughs> known as a dove. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I'm afraid of birds. Why would I know what birds were? You need to know your enemy. Pigeon. <laughs> Pigeons. Many pigeons. What a place to be a pigeon, though.